This next person, one of my favorite people on planet Earth, uh, someone that I worked with for a few years, and she's now in our Millionaire Roundtable, uh, which is a group that, that, that we run. She is a top earner in her company. She is a rock star, and I'm just so proud of her. Please help me welcome Paula Chavez. Paula, what's going on? Hi, everybody. Hi, Ray. I'm super excited to be here and so honored. Just grateful. You, I never get tired of telling you how grateful I am for you, oh. for the community, for these people. And I know you sometimes don't like to hear it, but I like to say it because you. I love to hear it. <laughs> I, you know, in the past, I really struggled to accept it, but I love to hear it. I love, I've always loved to hear it's it. True, it's true. It's true. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you it. Know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Paula, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about your journey. How did you get started in network marketing? Um, okay. So I've been in network marketing for about 10 years. I didn't fully understand the concept. I was actually, I actually joined a health and wellness company. Back then when I started, I had gained a ridiculous amount of weight after having my second baby. So I just started because I wanted to lose some weight and I was home. I was just sitting on the couch. I had totally lost myself in, you know, in the in the weight gain, in the being a mom and just being at home. Um, so I just wanted to lose some weight. I, came, I found fitness and through fitness, I found myself again. I had previously done real estate. And before that, um, I had, you know, I've been in this country for 20 years. So before that, I had all these other dreams and things and then uh, became a mom. So I gave up on all of that. And through network marketing, I kind of like found myself again, like, a, you know, like the desire to pursue something. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's how I found it. That's awesome. So you, when we started working together, that was a few years ago. And I mean, you were already, you know, doing pretty good. Um, You're already, you know, making decent money, et cetera. Uh, what were some of the tweaks? Cause you've since started doing a lot better. Right. And, and so like, what were some of the tweaks that you made that were helpful for you? Well, I, after being for so long in network marketing and just trying to figure it out, just being a mom and doing all the things, I, I had a hard time figuring out how to get people to do what I was doing. Like I felt like I couldn't explain it. So I thought I was, I thought I was doing things the wrong way. Like I thought I'm maybe I'm not good at this. Maybe this is, you know, like maybe I'm not a lot because a lot of your team were, they weren't doing the work. Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah, I remember our first conversation. I said, I don't know how to motivate people. I see a bunch of zeros in my downline. This is ridiculous. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Help me. I am stuck. And you said, whoa, hold on. <laughs> and uh, from that moment on, yeah, everything changed because I mean, I, you helped me see things that mm. I wasn't seeing. Mm. Yeah. So, and what, um, and what did that lead to? Like, what, how, what did you alter? What did you like? Did you alter your expectations, or did you did you change some things in the team, or what? What did you do? Well, you you did help me realize something that is big, and and it's even though we believe in the opportunity, and even though maybe we're being super successful, and we're seeing some people having success. It all comes down to it's not necessarily that you're not doing the right thing or that you're stuck as a leader, but it's that some people don't want that. Some people just want to belong to something that some people just right. want to be around you or they they just want to, you know, put their feet one foot in the water, but not necessarily both or go for a whole swim. Uh, so that was a big aha moment for me. And since that moment, I don't lead anybody with pressure. I, I hope, I don't know, the way I show up is different. I don't show up trying to get everybody to do what I want and to have the same goals as me, uh, but just to give a place for everybody to find themselves, to go at their own rhythm, to have the information available. And, and like you said, whoever raises their hand, help them. So I make myself available to provide that 
information and inspiration, leading by example. But ultimately, that was a big shift in my mindset. And from that moment, I started sleeping better because I was always blaming myself. And you said, yeah. you have this mom uh, guilt that you you need to get rid of it. I was like, oh, you're right. And yeah, it totally changed the game. Mo sure. You know, most leaders, they, 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 they put so much pressure on their team and themselves, mm -hmm. but that's how they got where they are. So they're afraid if they let up that everything's going to collapse. Yeah. But you saw the opposite. You saw when you, when you actually let up, you slept better but you actually got more results in your team, didn't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, aside from the sleep, um, mm -hmm. more duplication, more. And I love that, you know, going through that hardship and that awareness, it's helped me now help my leaders because I get the same conversation that I had with you. I get it with a lot of people. They're like, I don't know how to motivate my team. I'm not a good leader. I don't know what else to do. I'm so frustrated. I don't know how to get, you know, some people to do the work. I'm like, keep doing your work inspire people by your actions and by the way you show up than by beating yourself up and trying to motivate people that maybe have things going on in life and they're just happy being around you so yeah. that was i'm telling you it's one of the biggest frustrations of leaders and i say to you know everyone find people that want to do the work still love on everybody because not everybody your definition of work or what you want is different right. for everybody. And seasons change too. Like somebody may right now just be, they just love the products. They just want to be around you. They want a discount on the products. And then something in their life may change. Like last year with the circumstances, we had a lot of people that were just discount, yeah. right? They just wanted to be here for the discount. And then mm -hmm. they were home, no job. You know, they had more freedom. They had more flexibility or now their desire changed because now they needed an income that they right. didn't have. It was pulled from right from underneath them. Right. So you were ready. Like I was ready. Our team, our guides, our training, everything was ready. So it was, it was there available. But if I had not made that shift in my mindset, I would have gone crazy trying to help everybody and be available 24 seven yeah. just because of that mom guilt. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the flip side of that too, is whatever you do for your team, your think your team thinks you have to, they have to do too. So like, if you're there and you're answering every question, you're, you're answering every phone call, then they're like, Oh man, that's what I got to do. Eh, I don't want to do that. And so that you'll, you'll actually have people sabotage. You got a couple of uh, cool uh, comments here. Okay. Um, so Jen says as a person who's sponsored by you, Paula, I can say that what you're saying is amazing has helped me so much. Oh, Jen, love you, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> and then I saw one other He's one. He's an amazing leader. Uh, Camilo, maybe. Uh, I can totally relate to your story. Oh, um, so it's uh, pretty cool. It's pretty okay. cool. And, it, and it, it, you know, again, I mean, it's just, you know, so many leaders that are just so used to, you know, that that pressure and know that it's, it's longevity. It's not intensity. And, um, and this, some of some, some on here are used to, uh, me doing laser coaching. So this is more of an interview with a leader than laser coaching. So I'm currently not laser coaching her. So a couple of people are like, you know, Hey, when's he going to hit her? I mean, um, always, but, I'm very coachable, right? Ray always compliments yes. and says, I'm, I mean, I, I ask the questions that, you know, sometimes I don't yeah. like to hear the answers. But um, that's how we grow. We need somebody who's already been through what we're going through. And even, yeah. so here was the biggest thing. One of the biggest things for me too was you helped me understand, like I was doing the right things, but I didn't know I was doing things, a few things like right. Like I was teaching in a way, but I thought it was my fault. I didn't. I didn't understand that not everybody had the same. I'm like, oh my God, we have this opportunity. Like, why wouldn't you want yeah. it? I'm like, well, and you said to me, look, there are people that are making $20,000 a year and they're fine. They don't want more. They don't want to do the work required to get more. Right. Love on them. And I'm like, oh, that totally makes sense. Uh, otherwise, everybody would be killing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember. You know, I, I had to 
learned this lesson in multiple areas of my life. First in network marketing, you know, because I I mean, I used to get on the team calls and be like, if you're not prospecting 10 people a day, what's wrong with you? And my five percenters were like, yeah, man, that was awesome. And I'd see people quit. I'd see the team reduce. Right. Where where Teresa go? She was she was just here. And uh, and so I had to learn it there. I also had to learn it with my sons. You know, when I was in sixth grade, I was moving 100 airheads a day. I'd buy them for 10 cents. I sold them for a quarter. I had a big brown bag. I'm just slang. I'm slanging candy, man. They actually created a candy roll because of me. And um, and so I've, I've just always been that entrepreneur sales type kind of person. And I used to, you know, and my, you know, my sons, I mean, I've had, you know, when um, I mean, when they were like oh, 10 years old or something, I had them speaking in front of crowds because I thought, you know, I was always terrified of speaking and like that, you know, that would be helpful. So they were selling uh, popcorn for the Cub Scouts. They were selling candy for their school in front of, you know, hundreds of people on, on stage. And um, and then one day I remember I told them, uh, uh, hey, you know, if you want to sell those, you know, I was going to sell those toys. If you want to sell them on eBay, just sell them and you can, you know, keep the profit and or keep the keep the money. And um and I'm like, hey, how, you know, later on, I'm like, hey, how'd you do with those toys? And they're like, ah, people don't want to pay the shipping. And and that's when I kind of I realized that they didn't have what I had as a kid. And and so I stopped trying to push them into what I hoped, you know, I hope they become this. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know what? They they got their own thing going. And so, you know, Ethan's going into sports management. Um Brandon is double majoring in psychology and philosophy. He wants to be a therapist. So like, that's awesome. Good for them. Very different from me, but that's okay. Now, if I wanted to have a terrible relationship with them, I would just try to push them into being an entrepreneur. Why are you doing that? Go be an entrepreneur. And that's, that's the leader that's trying to push their level of desire on the people in their organization. And they don't realize it. They're like, I want it more than them. Well, what does that mean? When you when a leader says, I just want it more, I want it more for them than they do, it means that they're a disappointment, which is how they felt with their parents, yeah. which isn't good. And so instead, like love on them, keep them around the campfire, they may catch a spark, and you know, don't don't try to push them. Now, if they raise their hand, then all aboard, right? So I'm sure if someone came to you and said, Paula, you know what, I've been kind of hanging out for a year, but I'm ready to make some money, you would have very clear steps, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah, you so, say you go do this, go do this, go do this. And and the, the thing is, I also change that, I like the hope part of it. Like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to welcome them and love on them and hope that one day they want to do something. Like everybody comes into your team, into your life for a reason. So just, you know, some people, I mean, sometimes even they challenge you. Like the relationship challenges you in a way that it forces you to learn from how you're handling it. And then um, you grow from that. And maybe that relationship gets affected, but you learn how to, you know, every, I think everything has a reason. I always try and I teach this, I talk about this with my team. If you're, if you're struggling right now, if you have that feeling of stuff, don't blame yourself. Think, okay, what is this trying to teach me right now? What is it What's the lesson in this mess for me? Because it is happening for a reason instead of saying, Oh, nobody likes me or my business, I, I'm not good enough. I'm not good at this and, and turn around. There's, there's growth in there. So embrace it. Um, but um, one thing that I wanted to share with you guys is um, as you were talking about the selling candy, that was me in Colombia. I'm from Colombia, Latin America. I grew up, oh, I was always selling stuff. <laughs> I sell dinner to my kids. I'm like, yeah, you gotta eat the apple because the apple is so good for you and you're an athlete and all of this. Like all the time. I sold candy too. And back then it was a big deal because it was imported candy, like Milky Way. Here it's like it's in every corner there. Right. When I was in school, that was like how did you get it? It was imported. How'd you get it? Uh, so think like a Costco, but more like a illegal market of stuff. Like basically, <laughs> um, how do you contraband? Contra Black market. 
Well, kind of, but there were stores and I mean, there were stores, there were, it wasn't like shady stuff, but it was probably <laughs> a lot of, I mean, now that I think about it, like, I don't even want to know the details. Don't ask Craig. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, I saw that I saw like silver jewelry. I saw like all the things. Bra- I made bracelets. I made keychains. I've always liked having my own income. Like I've always yeah. I hated asking my parents for yeah. Stuff, I would always buy my things. It was just like a personal satisfaction. Like I loved having that independence. Just like yeah. I never leave my house without my keys. I, if I'm going somewhere, I want to have my car. Like I like that independence. So um, all of this to share with you guys, when I came to this country, I came temporarily. I had just graduated from school. I came here, it was supposedly to practice my English see my dad, spend some time with my dad, and then we would go back home to Colombia. But, you know, Destiny had other plans, and I say God had other plans too. I came here just with a small luggage, like small bag. Um, Think about this. Back then, I've been here 20, 21 years. Back then, a single girl on a plane from Colombia, there was something shady about it. Something was happening there. So, you know, you have that fear. Then I got here after a few months, September 11 happened. So there was a lot, like 9-11 happened. There was like a lot of changes, a lot of stress, a lot of things. Um, I found myself not going back home because getting paid here as I started cleaning houses and babysitting kids. And it was against my family's will. I had just graduated from the best, one of the best schools in the country. Wow. Uh, it was financially like a lot of stuff and I got you come here and you tell your family back at home that you're cleaning houses basically you're a maid and you're cleaning houses you're watching kids like what um so yeah. it was almost a dishonor but at the mm-hmm. same time I was like I'm willing to do whatever it takes because I saw opportunity in this country just like I saw it in mm-hmm. network marketing so uh, mm-hmm. when I look back like living in, the, in an apartment in the Bronx, just sleeping on a mattress on the floor with some white plastic chairs from like the dollar store and eating bread from the corner store and coffee. And, you know, I always thought there has to be something better. And once I became a mom, I was like, my dad never told me no to anything I ask. My dad always said yes. And having our three kids, like we got to a point where, and this is just about three and a half years ago that my kids were, mommy, can we go have ice cream? No. Mommy, can we buy this notebook? No. It was no, 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 no. Uh, we were in a lot of financial stress and I, I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. I'm going to commit. I'm going to give it my own. And Ray, you, you say this phrase all the time. Pain was pushing me because we, I was in a lot of pain. I, I thought about the future, retirement, telling no to my kids all the time, not being able to say yes, like my parents said to me all the time. So that helped me um, decide that I was gonna go through any challenges and that I was gonna use any help I could get. So I've always seek like who's, who's doing better than me, who's done what I want to do, who can help me, who can tell me what I'm doing wrong and how I can do better. Uh, And I think that's so important in this business. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Love, people love hearing that story, Um, getting a lot of great, great comments. So really cool. So if someone's, if someone's on here, maybe you got uh, like what, what might be a good tip for someone on here, they have a team, they're frustrated because a small percentage of their people are doing anything or maybe no one's doing anything like what's what would be a suggestion for them oh, guys i will tell you get around people that are at a similar level as you are because one of the things that i found and that i see in my team and in my leaders is you think that being a leader you need to be alone like now you're like this lonely person and you're not and the reality is that there's other people in your same situation, but they're also, so it's like this bunch of little leader islands that need to come yeah. together. And when I started with you, when I first, so the, the way I found Ray, I watched a video of one, you know, when Ray gets like, ah! 
<laughs> and that was like, oh my God, who's this guy? My friend, Melissa Sutherland. She was featured in uh, Rank Makers Live last year. Yeah. I saw her. She's just, and she's like, you got to watch this guy. And I'm like, what in the world like where is where is this so immediately like i don't need to know anything where do i find these she said he goes live every day and i'm like oh, i need that i need like daily i need that and then you know it wasn't that ray every single day and that it's right. it's you know that was like my entry but it was the more the the accountability from being around people that were going through the same the same struggles, yeah. the same ups, the same downs. Uh, entrepreneurship doesn't need to be a lonely place. Network marketing as a leader, yeah. you want to be around people that are at your level, and also you want to be with around people that are, you know, a little bit better than you are. So that you are and. I was just in an inter in a, an interview with Ray with Jess and her real estate coach. So that was great. He said, "I want to be the dumbest and the brokest person in like his circle of you know that that he's learning from." So I would suggest that definitely seek a place where you can be part of a community. And I mean, if you're not part, if you're part of Rank Makers, you're on the right track do the things, do the activities, do the exercises, watch the daily video. That to me has been super powerful from day one. And, and always, you know, raise your hand and say, Hey, I'm struggling with this. How are you guys doing this? And if it, and for leaders in terms of activity for your team, I would say, don't just say who's who, whoever does this is going to be the winner. I learned this from Ray. I would always do activities for the top people i would only focus on the top people the people that were producing but create opportunities for everybody to feel yeah. like they're winning the yeah. little win. so a lot of people doing a little you have way more you have more peace of mind you have way more results and small yeah. wins lead to people wanting bigger wins because they're they're gonna be in that environment where they're feeling inspired by you and by the small wins and stories of other people. So that's yeah. been really, really powerful for us. I would say awesome. you know, an amazing team there, uh, you know, there's, I just love, I love this industry. I love this business. Yeah. And I, I, I want everybody to be successful, but yeah. I also understand that everybody's journey is different. So, right. Yeah. For sure. Well, that's awesome. So um, two things. One, if you, um, a lot of the concepts we talked about today are in our leadership book, which we also have in yes, Espanol. <laughs> right? So we do have both. We got English, yeah. English and Spanish. So available on uh, Amazon if you'd like. If you are a six-figure earner or higher, we also do have a program called Millionaire Roundtable that Paula's a part of. And that's, you know, getting around people. So we bring some of our like investment advisors or coaches into that group. Um, like, you know, Charles today, I think he has like 4,000 rental units, like 4,000 Airbnbs. Uh, he's also got a couple of car lots too. I mean, he's a beast. He's an absolute beast, but that's who taught us, you know, how to handle Airbnbs and, and, and things like that. And we do bring a lot of the higher end kind of stuff into millionaire round table and so if you'd like more information on that, you can shoot an email to support at HigdonGroup.com. We don't actively market it because you do have to be at uh, six figures a year to, to be in that group or higher, of course. And so, Paula, this was amazing. You got so many, so many great comments. Uh, so many people are, are loving your story and uh, many are, uh, you know, just saying how much they love working with you. You got several of your team on here. too. <laughs> I have the best hype squad. <laughs> yeah. You no, came to your cheerleaders. I love it. So, thank you so much, Paul. I love your story. It's such an honor to, to work close with you. And thanks for sharing all your wisdom. Thank you, Ray. Good luck on everything you also have yeah. going on. I just, yeah. one thing that I love about you, you take us on that journey with you. Yes. So I remember when I started, where you guys were and now seeing it's so inspiring so oh. following not just what you're teaching but something that i also watch a lot and i recommend everybody do like also look at the behavior like look at okay look at the discipline the consistency pay attention pay attention yeah. to guys because there is so much value in 
everything that you do, Ray, it's, Appreciate you know, it's incredible. So Aww. thank you so Love much. You. I'm so grateful for you, for this community. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah, yeah. So give give Paula some love. Drop her some comments and give her some love. Feel free to share this if you got value from it. Uh, I think you know more leaders could uh, use this information to actually reduce their frustration and increase their results. And so feel free to share. Give Paula some love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you so much. Bye, guys. Thank you. You can find more great marketing, prospecting, and recruiting tips just like these over at RayHigdon.com. And remember to pick up your free copy of his 29 sources of network marketing leads. We'll see you over there.